hope your day is going wonderful. I'm so glad you're joining me today. Today we are going to take a look at the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit from May 2022. We're going to take a quick look um, and then we are going to jump in and create some cards. I'm excited about this month's kit um, because it is um, it has a little kitchen in there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I probably spent a lot of time, most of my life, in the kitchen because I love to bake and I love to cook. Um, and so I was loving this um, this month's My Monthly Hero Kit. This is how your kit will arrive in this nice vinyl um, zipper bag. It's great for storage. It comes with a content sheet. And it's really, the content sheets are really pretty, actually. I would love to have, um, actually we're, we plan on doing a little bit of remodeling and I want an island with a dark wood um, top on it. And that's what that, my, that's what that reminded me of. <laughs> but we are going to take a look real fast at our kit. And first we're going to go over the cardstock. Cardstock you get 12 sheets. Um, you get four different, um, four, 12 sheets for each of three different colors. And there is, these are eight and a half by five and a half inch sheets. Wanna fan them out nice and pretty for you. <laughs> um, I do wanna mention that um, I have baby blue. You have pink, white, and then you have a baby blue. Um, some, some kits may have mint, because I did notice on the content sheet that there is a mint color in here. So some will probably have baby blue, some will have a mint, um, depending on which one you get. But we also get a background stamp. This is a red rubber cling stamp and it will fit an A2 size card. Let me get a panel. This is a eight, this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. And you can see it, it's just slightly larger than that. So it will fit your card front. If you want to stamp the entire background on your card front. I love the print in here because it's, it reminds me of tiles, which is, which is great for your background, for your kitchen, but it's great for so many more different projects too. So this is nice um, stash building stamp. Um, I did check and Hero Arts does have kits available still, which is fabulous. And I'll leave the link down below if you guys want to check it out. Also included this month is a stamp set. This is a 4x6 clear stamp set. A lot of fun sentiments in here. There's birthday theme. There's a lot of sweet baking themes. And then there's um, some stamps that say from my kitchen to yours or um, have a delicious day made with love. A lot of these would be great for gift giving. Um, gift giving for your baked goods. <laughs> so that's included. And then you also get your fancy there's this is there's this it looks like one die but there's not it's actually quite a bit <laughs> there is um your cover plate which is basically the stove with a counter and then you get the oven hood or a light whichever you prefer and then there's some floating shelves on the side here that's what your fancy die will cut out but also included on the inside i'll, I'll break them apart so you can see it are some individual dies and there are six extra ones. There's a little pe a bread, there's a toaster on the counter and when you die cut out your main die, the toaster will die cut out also. So you there's actually a slit in here that you could put the bread in. I thought that was super adorable. You have a little muffin. Now the muffin could be a, um, a roll because there's a sentiment that says bun in the oven. So if you wanna make a cute little, um, welcome baby card that'd be so super cute there are a couple pots you get a big pot and then you get a pot with a handle and then you get a turkey so this will be nice for Thanksgiving and it fits nicely in the window of your oven <laughs> and when you die cut out your oven the if I believe there might be a score line down here or you may have to make a score line but your oven will open so you can actually hide some sentiments in there or uh, uh, some a bun or that'd be a cute way to tell your husband um, if you're having a baby and you want to tell your husband if it's a boy or a girl, you can make a pink muffin or a blue muffin. That'd be kind of cute. <laughs> um, I have, there's also included a little pie that will fit in the oven also. You can see there. 
And I think that is it. So you can basically see the base of the fancy die is a kitchen. How fun is that? And this is this is a A2 card front um, die. So it'll fit an A2 beautifully. So those are your dies this month. Also included is 10 yards of blue baker's twine. It coordinates really nicely with your blue card stock. And then you also get some embossing and watermark ink, which is always handy, especially because you get some cast iron embossing powder. Let's open it up. You can see here, it looks like there's a mixture of colors. So cast iron will probably give you a two dark tones of gray. So you get a full jar of this, and I believe that you get half of an ounce. I say half of an ounce doesn't sound like very much, but to me this is a full-size container. <laughs> so that's everything in the kit. Um, we are going to jump in and get started. I don't think I'm going to use the pink cardstock for my projects today, so I'm going to put away the pink, but I am going to use the blue and the white. I'm actually going to create three card bases really quickly. I'm going to bring in my scoreboard here and just create my card bases with this. This is a nice heavyweight cardstock. So, basically, you just to create your card bases, take your cardstock, place it um, horizontally on your scoreboard, score at the four and a quarter inch mark. I like to fold it over, put my card base back in my score uh, scoring board, and then reinforce the score line. This just helps keep it more even. We'll do one more, and then our white card bases are good to go. I'm, I'm going to bring in some more white cardstock, um, and then we're going to do a little bit of die cutting. So I'm going to put this back, and then we'll put our card bases aside, and we're going to. I'm going to also bring in um some hero hues cardstock this is sand which is a really nice craft color cardstock i thought that'd make some nice kitchen cabinets i'm kind of going for a modern kind of a clean looking kitchen um it might change i might throw in some bright colors we'll see <laughs> but um so i'm going to trim down a couple pieces so they are a2 panel sizes of that Okay, now I'm also, while I'm doing some die cutting, I thought we would bring in a few um, copper elements. I know we have the cast iron, but I think we need a little bit of um, orangey to go with our blue tones. Uh, so first we're going to I have some copper colored cardstock. I think this is the cardstock from Ranger. If I can find it, I'll link it below. Um, but I wanted some copper elements to go with it. I think that's going to go really good with the color palette. So um, I'm going to die cut out a couple kitchens, maybe one kitchen with the copper also. So I'm going to get to die cutting and then when I'm done, I will be right back. I'm going to go ahead and I die cut out two white, two of my sand cardstock, one of my copper, and I'm getting ready to die cut out one more of my uh, baby blue cardstock. I do want to mention that when you die cut out your kitchen, your fancy die, make sure, you want to make sure that it's centered on your card front panel because, um, it leaves the side of your panel. So if it is not centered, I'm gonna show you, let's see. If it's not centered, you can see here how thin this is on top. Um, it will be off balance. You see how thick this line over here is on this side and how thin this is. Make If you make sure it's centered, like this one here, um, it will be even all around. So center it on your panels um, to create your background. I'm going to run this last one through my die cut machine and then um, it looks like a lot. We're not going to use all of our elements, but I do want to kind of mix and match all of them to create um, our cards. 
Okay, I have a lot of pieces to put together, and um, it looks kind of overwhelming, but I don't think it's going to be um, that difficult to put these together. There are, are some smaller pieces I do want to let you know. For example, um, you see how, let me show, let me bring in some white cardstock. Your, um, your fancy die will cut holes in your drawers. So if you want to keep your handles, for example, if you want to um, inlay the blue into the copper, you want to make sure that you keep those. So check your die cut machine. You don't want to throw those out. They're, they're pretty small pieces. I'll show you. The nice thing is some of these um, kitchens, I should say, kept those pieces inside. You can see here. So that makes it really nice. Okay, I'm going to start by taking, let's see, I think I want to do my sand color. So I'm going to punch out all of my drawers. Trimming out the stove is super easy because, um, Okay, so our oven is trimmed out, our copper oven. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around and we're going to flip both of them around. I'm gonna tape down the oven on the sand colored cardstock. And for that, I'll just use some of my, some of the tape. You can use washi tape if you wanted to. But I'm gonna tape this closed. deal and then we're going to add some glue behind here I'm going to use my hero arts precision glue and we're going to oops to adhere this to the front of our card base just flip this around and add this to our the front of our card After we have this part of our kitchen, before we add our um, our copper stove, I want to add a little bit of light to our background. To do that, I'm going to bring in some masking paper, and I'm going to mark the bottom of my um, my vent here. I think it's a vent, and then. I think that's going to work out great, and I'm going to use the negative pieces. Okay, so I'm going to add one of my, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to actually use the negative portion. Good deal. And I'm, when I add up my masking paper, I'm making sure that I cover up this, this second shelf here. I don't mind covering up the stove. Um, partially because we're going to replace that with something else. Okay, I'm going to press down really good and I'm going to be using the yellow that's just left over from my blending tool and I'm going to add some color here. Good deal. Then we can remove our masking paper and we are letting the light shine in our kitchen. <laughs> okay, we have our oven hood. I'm going to trim away and I'm going to replace it over the existing sand colored hood. And I'm just going to use my tape runner for this. And I'm going to do the same thing with my stove, only I'm going to use glue because I want to make sure that I don't get glue on the oven door. Okay. 
Now we're going to add some blue accents to do that. I want to add um, some blue handles to our drawers. For my toaster, we are going to take the copper one. Add that. Okay, I went ahead and added all of my elements. Um, I used the die cut copper cardstock and the die cut baby blue cardstock and filled in a few of the areas. And then the rest, I used my Copic markers and colored in. I like the flower, I used red and green. Same with the apples, although the bowl, I did use the copper cardstock. I went ahead and used my black Copic marker and colored in the um, burners. I thought they kind of were out of place being copper, so I colored those in black. Um, I didn't adhere my pie because I do want to pop it up with some foam squares. So I'm just going to use a few small foam squares and we're going to add this, but before we do, I do want to stamp my sentiment and I'm going to stamp um, you bake the, no, may your day be filled with nothing but sweetness. I think that's a good one. So we'll take this we're going to put this on an acrylic block. I'm going to bring in my intense black ink. We'll ink up our sentiment. And I'm going to stamp it just under the light area. And then we can go ahead and I think that looks so cute. Oh my goodness. I wish remodeling a kitchen was this easy. <laughs> and then I'm going to add my pie to one of the burners. Now for my oven, I like that it opens and closes, but for this one, um, I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to it, but keep it closed. So I'm going to take a foam square. I'm just going to remove the release paper, tack that on the inside of the door and then towards the top, just so it's slightly open for a little bit of added detail. So that finishes card number one. And then we are gonna jump into our second card. For my second card, we're gonna do a little bit of heat embossing with our background stamp. So for this, I'm gonna bring in my stamping positioner. I'm gonna bring in our Misty. I'm gonna bring in the big one. I have to remove our mouse pad. I'm going to add some tape on the reverse side, line it up on my rubber stamp. Kind of position it. You kind of want this straight because your lines you want straight. So this is the best way. And then I'll take the back side of my stamping positioner, pull it over, press it down, and then reopen it. And then my paper is lined up perfectly where I want it. Now I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. And we're going to go over our baby blue cardstock. And then I'm going to ink up my background with my watermark ink pad. Okay, I think that looks good. We'll go ahead and close the lid of our Misty. We're going to press down really good. Then I'll use my tweezers to pick up my cardstock. Now for this background, I'm going to add white embossing powder. So we're going to take some scratch paper. Since I have copper, I think my uh, cast iron is going to clash a little bit with my background. So I'm going to use white. I went over it with white embossing powder. I'm going to funnel this back in my little drawer here. And then I'm going to use my heat gun and we will melt that embossing powder. And I'm going to use my tweezers. Now I went ahead and finished melting that embossing powder and I think that looks wonderful. I have a few extra elements for my projects. I did trim down a three quarter inch strip of the copper cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this on the very bottom of my panel. Of 
And then if I have the excess overhanging, I'll trim off. And then I took um, the stove, I just trimmed out the stove um, from the sand card stock. And this one is actually going to stay closed. So I can add some foam adhesive behind here, add a little dimension too. I went ahead and die cut out the same stove um, in the background, trimmed out the, the door portion, and we're going to adhere this to our oven here. And then I'm going to use my black Copic marker again and go over the top portion of the stove. I'm taking that this is a gas burner. <laughs> okay. After we have this done, I'm going to be using, I created a pie. I colored in a the white pie. Um, I cut it out with white and then the copper. Colored in it in with red copper markers and then um, put it in my copper pie tin. And I also die cut out a copper pot. <laughs> um, we're going to flip these over and add some foam adhesive behind here as well. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to adhere my background panel directly to my card base. For this, I'm going to use another piece of fun foam. Well, that is a first. I don't think I could ever do that again. Make it perfect without measuring. Okay. This is going to go in the middle of our card base. And then we'll take a piece of vellum. I die cut out a circle. Um, and this is where we're going to stamp our sentiment. Um, I love the blue background, but I didn't want it to obstruct my, um, my background. So let's stamp our sentiment on here. And for this, I'm going to stamp Have a Delicious Day with my Hero Hues Onyx ink. Oh, I think I got it. This is a juicy ink pad. I think I went a little overboard. And for this, I'm actually going to use our cast iron. I think that's going to look really nice. So we will. You could use your. Um... Your watermark ink if you wanted to. Um, I think it would create the same effect, but I really wanted this to be a little bit more intense. So the cast iron is going to work out perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and melt this. I'm going to remove the release paper off of my stove, line this up on the bottom, and then we'll add our pot, our copper pot here. And then we'll add our little pie. We'll let it be cooling on our stove. <laughs> okay, and then for finishing touches, we're going to bring in our baker's twine. I'm going to wrap it around a couple times, and then we're going to tie a bow up here towards the top. After we have our bow, tied. I'm going to take my glossy accents and go over our pie. My bottle's clogged here. And then we are going to take some glitter. This is just glitter I picked up at Walmart. And we're going to shake a little bit of glitter on top of that pie because we've got to have some sugar on there. I love adding glitter to glossy accents. I'm going to tap this off here. See that? Our little pie. And then for our our handles, I'm going to bring in my Nouveau. This is Ebony Black Crystal Drops. And I'm going to replace the handles that are on the stove 
with some crystal drops. Maybe I should add, a, I'm going to add a dot of white to the middles of this. Good deal. Let me show you up close. Tap it a little bit. But we see our, our knobs are a little bit dimensional. I don't want to tilt it too much. I'm afraid they, they would um, get it misshapen. But that will finish off card number two. Okay, for my next card, we're going to go ahead and just use, we're not going to use the floating shelf area of our, um, of our kitchen. We're just going to trim away that section. And then I'm going to also take my paper trimmer and trim off the bottom half. We'll just line these up. Trim off that bottom section. And then I'm going to trim away a little bit from the left. And I'm going to trim away a little bit from the right. And so we have just the base of the kitchen. Pretty easy peasy. I'm going to punch out the, I'm going to go ahead and punch out my drawer handles. And then I'll flip over this, this piece of the kitchen. And then I'm going to take some white cardstock. And we're going to adhere this behind the drawers. Instead of inlaying, we are just adding some cardstock behind there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some um, fun foam and adhere it behind here. I'm going to use my white gel pen. Rather than cut this um, stove handle out, I'm going to use my white gel pen and just fill that in. Now for this card, I don't want my toaster either, so I'm going to chop that off. That's the nice thing. You can customize your kitchen. <laughs> No toast this morning, just a fruit ball. Okay, now I have a piece of that same sand cardstock. We're going to take this and I'm going to use that same background stamp. This time I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to tack this down, press down really good. I had to ink it up a few times, but I think this is going to be perfect. Now, while I have my Misty or my stamping positioner out, I'm going to take my card base. And now instead of using my watermark ink this time, I'm going to be using some gray ink. And this is going to go horizontal, the width of our card base. Like so. Any excess overhanging, I'm going to trim off with my scissors. Okay, we have our stove adhered. And then what we can do next is take our... I went ahead and colored in a bowl of fruit. We're going to adhere this over our, the bowl of fruit that's already on the counter. And then I did create a pot. Copper pot here. We're going to adhere this, but I'm going to use a foam square for this. We'll add this. We'll place that on the counter. And then we need to stamp our sentiment for this card. I'm going to use my intense black ink. And what sentiment are we going to use? We're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to add ebony black nouveau drops to those door. Um, oh, you know, let's do white. Let's do white first. Then we're going to fix our door, our, our burner knobs. We're going to add some white Nouveau Crystal drops. I'm going to take my glossy accent and go over my pepper shaker. They went over my apples, both of my pots, and my pepper grinder with my glossy accents. And then that will finish off that card. So let's take a look at all three cards I made this month. Okay, so these are the cards 
all three cards that I made today with the Hero Arts, my monthly Hero Kit for May 2022. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to use the kit, something a little bit different. But thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week.